welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another episode of First or Flanker. In this video I will be comparing perfume originals to subsequent flankers you guys. And you guys have given me so much positive feedback on this mini series of First or Flanker. I have already done two episodes now, first episode number one and two. I will link them up here and down in the description box. Please make sure to check them out if you haven't seen them yet. So this is episode number three, you guys, where I will be comparing more perfume originals to their flankers. Obviously not the ones I already talked about in the first two videos. I'm talking about more perfume originals and their flankers in this video. I think a lot of us need help in deciding which one to get, whether to get the original or like the thousand other flankers that they come out with subsequently, right? And you don't want to buy the original and all of the flankers. I've made a couple of exceptions. I will actually get to uh, one of them here, the first original and the flankers I have to talk about. I've pretty much bought almost all of the flankers, you guys, because I just adore this line. But other than that, you just want to know which flanker is the best or if the original is the best one because you don't want to buy all of them you guys that can get expensive and it creates clutter in your perfume collection i wish there were more videos like this so people can like decide easier you know so i decided to start this mini series of comparing the originals to their flankers so i can help you guys in deciding which ones to buy the original or the flankers so you guys if you want to see what perfume originals and flankers i'm going to talk about today and my thoughts on them and which ones to pick, just keep watching. So first I have an original and a bunch of flankers, which I pretty much bought almost all of the flankers to this original, you guys, because this particular line is one of the very rare few lines that I absolutely adore. I can't get enough of them, so I kept buying all of the flankers because in this case, I wanted to make an exception and get all of them. I mean, I, I'm missing maybe one. But anyway, I bought pretty much all of them. So the one I'm talking about, you guys, is C by Giorgio Armani. Oh my goodness, you guys. And it has four flankers here that I'm going to compare the original to. Here they are. I have four of them right here. So I'll get to them here in a second. But first, I want to talk about the original. Oh, you guys, I think the reason why I love this fragrance line so much is that blackcurrant, juicy blackcurrant note in the opening. I believe they all have that blackcurrant note and it is to die for, you guys. I think that's the signature of this line and many of them have ambroxan in the base you know, so that juicy blackcurrant in the opening, that fruity burst of freshness in the opening with that freshness of the ambroxan. Ambroxan is the synthetic version of ambergris. That burst of marine freshness in the base from the ambroxan combined together. It's so gorgeous. And the floral notes in the middle, like rose. It is a great fragrance for daytime wear in the summertime, springtime. You can actually wear it all year round if you want to but this performs the best during spring and summer because there's something really fresh about this fragrance very kind of it, it's it doesn't have aquatic notes obviously but it has that juicy freshness from the black currant and that freshness marine freshness from the ambroxan and it meshes so well with sweat you guys i don't know about others but my body chemistry works so well with this fragrance and the flankers actually all of them especially the entance version and the thing about it that i love is that gorgeous woodiness that's in this fragrance with that big dose of vanilla too and that freshness from like i said blackcurrant and the ambroxan it's a very aromatic fragrance you guys it's just beautifully aromatic of course it's fruity it's floral it's got a I've got patchouli in the base which helps it last long i think and it's a little bit soft spicy it's a little green and it's a little earthy. This has blackcurrant cassis, there's rose, there's freesia, there's vanilla, there are woody notes, there's ambroxan, there's patchouli in the base. 
amazing fragrance. Now let's move on to the Entangs version, which is in this gorgeous black bottle. By the way, you guys, now I'm a little confused. They just came out with a new Entangs, C Entangs, which looks like this. I will put a picture up here. So I'm wondering if that is the same as this. They just changed the packaging or is that like a newer reformulated Sion Tons that smells different from this? I'm actually crazy enough to buy that one too, you guys, although I'm pretty sure these two are going to probably be the same, if not a very slight difference. I love this fragrance line so much, I might buy the new version of Entons too. So that's like the only flanker I'm missing, I believe, but I have all the other flankers. So technically I have it too, because this is C Entons as well in different packaging if they're the same formulation. But anyway, this is C Entons, you guys. Oh my gosh. This is C only on steroids. So this is actually a true intense version of the original. This is actually almost the same as the original, but only more intense. This is a true intense. A lot of the time you hear, you know, intense of a fragrance, you know, and that come out as a flanker and sometimes it's not really the same fragrance. It's a different, you know, fragrance with different notes, but for some reason they call it intense. But this one is actually a true intense version of the original, I would say. More or less, has the same notes as the original with a, a few more added notes i believe this one like has more citruses in it like mandarin orange and bergamot and stuff and then this has i believe osmanthus in in here that's added and a few more floral notes added in the base you get that vanilla the woody notes the patchouli just like the original as well this smells like a much more intense version of the original and it's beautiful this was my signature fragrance for a very long time and actually i it still is i would say during the summertime you can wear c during the day and you can wear this at night time if you want to i adore it and i think it's c only even better and stronger and then i have c fiori oh my gosh this is so beautiful this is like the quintessential bridal fragrance you guys this is very girly, very beautiful. Just beautiful is the word. It's a beautiful floral fragrance, Fiori floral. Uh, this, this was in my um, best fragrances for brides video, my bridal fragrance video. Now this one is even more heavy in vanilla than the first two I talked about. This has a really massive dose of vanilla. It's very fruity, very floral. And this one is a little bit more powdery and musky than the first two. The first two are a little bit more like fresh, you know, like with the ambroxan and the, and the blackcurrant, you know what I'm saying? And this one is a, it, it is a little bit more floral, musky and powdery side of things. And this is also, of course, woody and soft spicy as well. And this has that signature blackcurrant note in the opening and, and I think that's the signature across all the C fragrances. There's that blackcurrant note in the opening. This has in the middle Neroli, Rose, there is um, Oak Moss I believe giving it a little bit of a earthy touch too. There's Patchouli actually in the middle which makes it even like I guess last longer than the other two. Although I haven't really seen a difference that much between this and the first two in terms of longevity and this has a massive dose of musk in the base with that gorgeous vanilla so this doesn't have any ambroxan because this leans more towards the musky powdery side so it's beautiful floral fragrance that rose note in here with the musk and the vanilla mm, to die for love this fragrance very girly perfect for spring especially in summertime and then I have everyone talks about this one. This is Si Passion. This one is the red version. This one is also really beautiful. Although I've seen people complain that this doesn't last. I haven't noticed that much of a difference, honestly. And this one is also very, very fruity. It's a very fruity one, like fruity and sweet. And it has like that big dose of vanilla, just like the other ones. Not as big as the Sea Fury, I guess, the vanilla, but uh, there's a good dose of vanilla. Uh, this one has that little bit of soft spice, just like the, the 
first ones. It is floral, it's fresh, it's powdery, it's a little citrusy. And this one also has that gorgeous, beautiful, juicy black currant note in the opening, which is the signature, like I said, across all these uh, sea fragrances. And this has pink pepper in the opening, which is a very kind of happy, kind of spicy note. And this has grapefruit in the opening and a, and a pear note. Pear note adds this sort of feminine touch, you know, to fragrances. And this one actually has a pineapple note in it. So it's very kind of like juicy, fruity kind of version of the seas of sea line and this has rose heliotrope and jasmine so it's quite floral too a little bit powdery with the heliotrope and then there is cedar amber wood vanilla and patchouli in the base yeah it's it's stunning you guys this is i love the fragrance notes in this one so lastly i have this one right here this is sea la parfum so this one i think is being discontinued because it's really hard to find this i actually had to pay an arm and a leg to buy this from someplace i forget where i got it from but anyways yeah this is the you know the cap is a little different in this one like as you can see there's like a clear part to the cap whereas the other ones have like a you know solid black cap the juice is gorgeous and dark very much like that dark kind of ambery looking juice Mm. Like I said, as the juice shows, this is a very ambery fragrance. There's a big dose of amber in this fragrance, which is like this sexy kind of uh, resinous fragrance note that has a slight bit of gourmet touch to it. It's very fruity, it's vanilla-y, it's balsamic, it's woody, patchouli, um, it has floral notes in it, it's slightly soft spicy and it's a little bit smoky and the smokiness comes from the incense you guys. This has an incense note which is beautiful if you ask me. I love 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 that incense note in here. You know and again the signature note in the opening the black currant is in here as well the juicy gorgeous black currant note and you would think it doesn't work with that incense note yes it does it does it sure does so in the opening you have that gorgeous black currant you have bergamot there's incense in the in the middles which is quite strong because it's in the middle in here which is very giving it a very kind of an oriental touch and then there's osmanthus there's jasmine in the middle in the base you get that massive dose of amber with benzoin which smells a little bit like vanilla and then there's a big dose of vanilla so amber vanilla benzoin all the, of them and then there's patchouli for lasting power stunning fragrance i have no idea why they're discontinuing this this reminds me of the Mugler Alien Essence Absolute, actually. Kind of reminds me of that. So yeah, you guys, I just looked up the Sea Intense, the new version. It definitely has different notes from the original Sea Entente, so the formulation is different a little bit. The new 2021 version has Davana in the, in the middle and Benzoin in the base instead of Vanilla. So there's like a slight bit of tweaking and the rose is actually Turkish rose. So yeah, there's a slight bit of difference, but I don't think that it's going to be a, a massive difference between the 2021 Sea Intense and the previous Sea Intense that I have here in the black bottle. <sighs> I, I adore the Sea Entente very, very much. Love it. Love Sea Fiori. To me, these two are like neck and neck. I would say these two are a tie for me i mean it depends on whether you like the more musky powdery version of c or you like the more ambroxin fresh you know a little bit like intense version of the original i guess it would depend and i love c passion i would say that's the next one so these two are a tie and then comes c passion and then i love c uh, le parfum which has got a nice oriental touch. But does that mean I don't like this? Oh my gosh, no. Keep this in mind. I have all of these in my collection for a reason because I love all of them. It's just that to me, the Sion Tons is, at least the old version, is basically a, a more intense version of the, new, the original. So to me, this is better than the original. So this is last only for that reason. Here's the order in which I would recommend them starting from this and here to the end here so yeah love them you guys so next i have the original and flankers from dolce and gabbana you guys it's a very famous line from this house they are none other than the one and the only one perfume line you guys so i have here 
Dolce and Gabbana the one I believe this was the original and then I have Dolce and Gabbana the only one and then we have also Dolce and Gabbana the only one on tons so let's first talk about the one right here so this one is a very spring summer appropriate fragrance you guys it's a very fruity white floral sweet powdery amber like citrus a little bit fresh soft spicy a little bit musky type fragrance this has like beautiful fruity notes like peach and lychee in the opening which i really love in the opening the lychee note it has like citruses like bergamot and and uh, mandarin orange then it has a bunch of really gorgeous white florals like lily lily of the valley there's jasmine in here there is a plum note that's kind of juicy that's in the middle there's vanilla in the base there's amber there's musk and there's vetiver it's beautiful it's very much a again spring summertime fragrance and then we have this beauty right here Dolce and Gabbana the only one. Oh, this has that gorgeous caramel accord there's coffee in here it's a very caramel coffee sweet iris powdery violet you know there's powdery accords in this fragrance it's got vanilla it's warm spicy it's a little bit fruity this has in the opening i believe violet there's bergamot and mandarin orange there's citruses there's coffee in the middle which is gorgeous there's iris in the middle there's rose there's orange blossom there's peach and in the base there's that gorgeous caramel note there's vanilla in the base with that coffee caramel and vanilla it's a little bit gourmand um, and then it has patchouli for lasting power this is really beautiful i really like this one this lasts a very long time on skin and clothes enter dolce and gabbana the only one on taunts you guys i think all of us know this one the most since it's the latest there is a gorgeous coconut note in here in this one. There's something very dark about this fragrance. Obviously, you can see it's in a black bottle. This is definitely not a fragrance for like summer, springtime, daytime. You can wear this nighttime during spring and summer, I would say. It's one of those hypnotic, narcotic white florals with gorgeous notes like coconut in it. Um, it's woody. It's, like I said, coconutty. It's citrusy. It's you know kind of sweet it's fresh it's a little bit citrusy it opens with neroli mandarin orange there's green apple in the opening there's coconut in the middle the beautiful coconut note there is orange blossom and jasmine in the middle and in the base you get that massive dose of vanilla of course and there's cedarwood and cashmere and i believe also in the base yeah this one is like a white floral but it's got a darkness to it because of that hypnotic quality of the white florals in here i think with the coconut i would say this is a nice one for summertime again spring summer nighttime i would say this fragrance or you can wear this in the colder months as well believe it or not really good um, because of the sort of hypnotic quality of this fragrance kind of like the dior hypnotic poison you know how it's a you know kind of white floral fragrance but it's you know more appropriate for colder months and it's definitely a nighttime fragrance so just because there's white florals in here doesn't mean it's going to be a daytime summertime fragrance so which one do i like the most out of the three that i just showed you i really do adore the dolce and gabbana the only one on tones it's nice but it's not exactly it doesn't describe my personality i guess for me it's not the right type of white floral for me um the coconut note in here is gorgeous but it, it, it's a weird fragrance you know what i'm saying it's got coconut but it's appropriate for more nighttime wear it's white floral but it's very hypnotic it's an odd fragrance you know what i'm saying so uh, let me put a pin on that but i gotta say this one right here dolce and gabbana the only one this one's got that gorgeous coffee note with the with the caramel in there mm -mm. I would say my favorite is this one you guys out of the three that I just talked about this one lasts forever and this one is a compliment getter definitely a fragrance for nighttime wear I again I would say this one can be worn all year round but at nighttime not daytime uh, really good for colder months uh, fall and 
winter for sure, especially. But you can wear it in spring and summer too at nighttime. This is my favorite, you guys. So yeah, that's number one. I gotta say this one, you guys, is very, very classy. This one is a very classy fragrance. It smells expensive, although it's quite, you know, designer price affordable, I would say. But this one is also gorgeous in a whole other way, very kind of contemporary, um, a little bit weird, you know what I mean? It's kind of like nice in a weird way. So this one like, is captivating in that way. I would say these two are a tie, but I don't I, I don't want to do a tie because that's not why we're here. We're trying to rank these fragrances. I would go ahead and say this one is number two, although this one's very classy too, but this one is quite unique, quite weird, you know? So I would say this is number two and this is last. So, um, so this is the order in which I like them, starting from this end. So the Dolce & Gabbana, the only one, Dolce & Gabbana, the only one on Tons, and then the Dolce & Gabbana, the one. So next I have actually three flankers to an original from Dior, and I have smelled the original for sure. I know what it smells like. It's very much a vintage fragrance at this point, you guys. So let me first introduce the three I have here. Here they are, so I have Dior Poison Girl, Dior Hypnotic Poison, and Dior Pure Poison. So these are the three flankers to the original Poison, Dior Poison, which came out in 1985, I believe. So it's very much a vintage fragrance. And I have gotten my nose on it, you guys. It's quite strong. I can tell you right now, I would place that last in this lineup. So. I don't even have to talk about that one. Just like the vintage fragrances used to be, the original is like super complex with like a thousand fragrance notes, you guys. That's how they used to do perfume back in the day. And it's gotten a little bit more simplified. Like they used to put like a lot of notes in one fragrance. And that's why they smelled so powerful and sort of like it takes your nose out. Most of the vintage fragrances, you know, so poison is no different. The original poison had like wild berries plum it had all these woody notes like rosewood cedar the spicy notes like cinnamon had floral notes like rose carnation African orange flower and a whole bunch of flowers and, and then I think there was tuberose too there's incense there's like amber there was heliotrope vetiver gosh I could go on and on and on so the original poison was like quite complex you guys so yeah and I've smelled it it's quite strong so I will let, now talk about the three I actually do have. You guys don't need me to say much about these three. You guys know how I feel about them, each of them. And this one right here is one of my go-to date night fragrances. It's so darn sexy. Something so unique about this fragrance. This has like that doll hair kind of scent to it, you know. With I mean, people say plasticky, but that's not what it smells like. This has like a gorgeous almond note. This has white florals in here. Uh, it's got musk. It's got this massive dose of vanilla. It's very sweet. Like I said, a massive dose of almond in there, which makes it very like, you know, almond makes women's fragrances very sexy, if you ask me, especially when combined with floral notes, like white floral notes. And this has white florals. It's very kind of fruity. It's a little nutty from the almonds. Um, it's got a coconut accord in it. It's a little powdery. It's, um, you know, balsamic. It's woody. Oh, I just love this. Um, that massive, massive, massive dose of vanilla makes it super, super awesome. Love this fragrance. It's one of my go-to date night fragrances. Lasts forever. Siage, projection, everything is great. And then you have Dior Pure Poison. This one is quite a man killer as well. It looks innocent and everything, but men love this fragrance. I don't know. I don't know why. I think the white florals, they like the white florals. And here, oh, it's so feminine, so beautiful. It's basically a white floral citrus woody fragrance. It's not that complex in like fragrance accords. This opens with a bunch of citruses um, and jasmine in the opening, a big, 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 big dose of jasmine. And then in the middle you get gardenia, orange blossom, more white florals. This one is definitely a, a big white floral fragrance very bewitching, hypnotic. And in the base, you get a massive dose of sandalwood with that sensual touch. There's musk, um, there is amber in the base, 
and there's woody notes like cedar in the base beautiful fragrance again very hypnotic uh, kind of white floral fragrance and then we have poison girl this one is a little bit more youthful than the other two the other two are a little bit more like grown-up kind of sexy you know this one's got a massive dose of vanilla as well you guys it's very sweet it's kind of powdery it's like ambery citrus it's nutty fruity and a little woody and and warm spicy it opens with like bitter orange and lemon that kind of citrus notes it has like two kinds of rose in the middle like damask rose or something and then there is um orange blossom in the middle there's a massive massive dose of vanilla in the base with tonka bean so it's a very strong vanilla uh, accord that's in here there's almond there is um sandalwood uh there's i believe heliotrope cashmere and so yeah, a lot of really good notes. Um, it smells really beautiful. It's something that's actually an attractive fragrance, I would say would make you attractive kind of in a way, um, but a little bit more youthful than the other two. These are very much like grown up kind of sexy. So yeah, how would I rate them? This is again going to be so hard. Because I love all three of them, to be honest, quite very much, which is why I have all three of them. Um, I would say Hypnotic Poison, hands down, because how uniquely sexy it is. You know, it's very uniquely sexy. And next one is Pure Poison, because it's so bewitching, kind of a, a sexy, bewitching white floral. And men love this. It's a man killer. And then I also like this one, to be honest. I don't like this last because I don't like this. Like, they're all good. I mean, they're all super, super good. But I would place this last only because I don't know why. I mean, it smells really good too. Um, but these two are just a little bit more special to me. The first two, Hypnotic Poison and Pure Poison. So this is the order in which I would place them, starting from uh, my left here. So Hypnotic Poison, Pure Poison, and Poison Girl. Then I have two that I can now compare because I just bought the original. To be honest, like a lot of these people saying, oh, you know, um, it's now outdated or it's overworn, blah, blah, blah. Kind of may have like subconsciously deterred me from buying this fragrance, but I am so glad I did. Because I did have a sample, it wasn't a blind buy, I did have a sample and you know just recently I was digging out my samples and I smelled it and I thought why don't I buy this fragrance, it's gorgeous, I don't care what people say, it's stunning. I mean I love some fragrances from like 1980s you guys, like the one for example. It's none other than Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium and Black Opium Entrance you guys. Ah, uh, Yeah I actually bought this first believe it or not. Because I didn't want to get the original because everybody was saying, oh, you know, everybody wears it, blah, blah, blah. But then I got this one. I heard that this one is quite nice too and it was a little bit unique and different. So I bought this one first, but I really had to have the original as well. I just bought this. I haven't even hauled this yet, you guys. This is going to be in my next haul video, which will be coming up soon. Mmm. This one's good, you guys. You got to say it's good when something is good, no matter how many people wear it. It's good. What I adore about this fragrance is that gorgeous coffee note with that massive dose of vanilla. Vanilla and coffee are the top two accords in this fragrance, you guys, and it's amazing. I don't have very many fragrances in my collection with such a beautiful coffee accord, you guys. The coffee in this is so much better. For example, the Montel Intense Cafe, which I thought was gonna have a gorgeous coffee note, it really doesn't, you know, but this one now, this one does have a real coffee accord. It's coffee all right, you know. It's You can smell the coffee. It's beautiful with that vanilla. So it's very much a vanilla, coffee, sweet, like white floral, soft, spicy, fruity, woody, powdery, balsamic fragrance, you guys. Very balsamic, I would say. It lasts a long time it leaves an impression you know this opens with gorgeous notes like pear pink pepper and orange blossom it doesn't get any better than that you guys know how gorgeous those notes are pink pepper you know i love pink pepper in the middle you get that gorgeous note of coffee you guys with almond and jasmine oh it's so good there's a licorice note in the middle there is vanilla patchouli cashmere and cedarwood i believe in the base 
you guys, it's a beautiful fragrance. It's beautiful. I don't care how many people wear it. It's stunning on me. This is a really good nighttime fragrance to go out in, like for night out. Enter Black Opium Entons. Now this one has even a bigger coffee accord than the original, if that's possible. It's very much an aromatic fragrance. It has a big dose of vanilla. It's very sweet, just like the original. It's sweet, but it's also kind of bitter, you know? It, it has warm spiciness to it. Um, it's white florally, it's a little powdery. The interesting thing about this one version, you guys, I think, which is what people were referring to, that this one is very, like, different and unique, like something, fresh and new about this, like something very different about this. This has like the most like interesting two fragrance notes, you guys. It opens with absinthe, like, you know, drink, like absinthe that you drink and boysenberry, you guys. There's uh, that big dose of coffee, just like in the original. There's jasmine and orange blossom in the middle. Uh, so it's very kind of similar to the original there and in the base you get vanilla licorice and sandalwood so this has like like that sensual touch with the sandalwood in the base so yeah the the uniqueness of this i think comes from the opening notes honestly is it a more intense version of the original i wouldn't say so i think they're both quite intense to be honest like the original is very intense to you guys i mean you spray this on you you're gonna smell of it you know people are gonna smell you it's a very resonating kind of like fragrance. So which one do I like out of the two? My answer may surprise you guys. As unique as this one is, the Black Opium Entons, I still like the original better, you guys. There's something about the original that's just irreplaceable. Like it's just a one of a kind, one of those fragrances that you know when you smell Black Opium. That's Black Opium, right? because it resonates in your brain. It's that kind of fragrance, it's amazing. The composition, you guys, it's a beautiful composition. It's irreplaceable. This one is, yes, unique with the absinthe and the boysenberry and all that, but it's still not the original. The, 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 that sexy touch the original has, to me, the original is better, you guys. So that's my choice in this battle of the two. So you guys, I actually had more fragrances in my basket here, more originals and flankers, but I think we've talked about these long enough that this video is going to be too long if I include the five, six other originals and flankers in this video. So I'm going to leave them for my next episode, the episode number four, I think. So um, I think that's it for this episode, you guys. I hope you found this very helpful that it will help you in making a decision as to the original is better or the flankers are better you know this this is hopefully helpful to you guys i know that this is very helpful because many of you guys actually wrote to me and said that it's really helpful and i'm going to continue to film this series as long as i have the originals and the flankers to them i have a large perfume collection so i can keep going for a while and i will be buying new originals and flankers i'm sure in the coming few months so i hope you enjoyed this video you guys if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel make sure that button goes from red to kind of white gray whatever gray white and then ring that notification bell that's very important you guys if you don't ring the notification bell you're not gonna get notifications also don't forget to follow me on instagram you guys i will see you guys in my next video